Until next time, I'm Ryan Mucky, and this is Hello Mendix. No, oh. wait, <laughs> don't use that one. <laughs> Hello everyone, what's up? And welcome back to Hello AWS. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Amazon Recognition Connector and see just how easy it is to use the Detect Custom Labels action in Mendix. With the new Mendix Connector, it's incredibly easy to set it up in your app today. From facial recognition to creating your own custom labels, you can train it to detect anything you want in an image. So of course, I came up with something super useful and practical for day-to-day -day life. I created an app which can detect different kinds of dog beads in images. Inspired by my own dog, Bean, I'm constantly being asked what kind of dog he is. Simba. So if you've ever found yourself asking what kind of dog is that, well, now there's an app for that. All jokes aside, I wanted to create something which showcases just how easy it is to train your own recognition model to detect anything you want. And using it to detect dog breed seemed like a fun example. In this video, we're gonna be using session-based credentials, which I talked about in my last video. So if you haven't watched it yet, go back and watch it now. There should be a link on screen to do so. It's really important because we're gonna be building on what we did last time in this video. The first step to creating a recognition project is to create a data set which our model will be trained on. What that means is we have to create an Amazon S3 bucket to which we can upload our images which we will use to train the model. So let's go do that now. All right, so the first step to creating a S3 bucket is to go into the AWS Management Console and we're gonna go to the Amazon S3 overview. Um, you can always search for uh, S3 in the bar. You'll find it here. So we're going to create a new bucket. So the first thing we got to do is give our bucket a name. So I'm going to say hello AWS dogs. And uh, it's important the name doesn't have any uppercase letters or uh, spaces. Then you need to make sure your AWS region is correct. This needs to be the one nearest to you. And again, this is going to reduce latency and makes those calls go through quicker. You can leave everything else as default. No need to change anything unless you have special need to. You can click create bucket. So let's go into our bucket. And we're going to upload our images here. So we're going to add a folder and I have a folder of images of dogs and I'll take you there in a second. We'll say upload. Um, it's on my desktop, so it's easy to get to. So it's important that your uh, your photos are in folders and they need to be labeled correctly um, because these file names are going to be used to create the labels that recognition returns to us. So you can see I've got three dog breeds in here, so we'll only get back three labels ever. Um, you can expand this and you can add more breeds later or more sets of data to your uh, model at any time. You just need to retrain your model. Okay, so our images are uploaded. We can say upload. Next up, we need to create and train our recognition model. This is actually a pretty easy step. So if you've never used recognition before, you can just go to the recognition console and then look for projects underneath custom labels. Um, you can also search for it in the bar. Um, so we are going to create a project. And if you've never used recognition before in this region, it's going to add a pop-up asking you to create an S3 bucket to hold the configurations. So you can just accept that. I've already been here before, so um, I've already done it and it won't show again. So for project name, I'm just gonna call it Hello AWS Dogs. And there we have our project. Now we need to create our data set. So we're going to start with a single data sets and we're going to choose to import our images from an S3 bucket. So we need the S3 URI. Um, so we can go back here and we can go here. Now we want this one over here, the parent object. So if we go to properties and get the S3 URI and we can paste it in here. Then we want to automatically assign image level labels to images based on their folder name. Make sure that is selected. 
Now we need to take this policy and add this to our S3 bucket. So we can copy that and go to the bucket. Go back to the parent and we're going to permissions. And we need to apply a bucket policy. So to do that, we click edit. And we paste this in here. So we need to make a few changes to this policy to make it specific to our project. So what we have to do is everywhere it says principal and then service and then recognition Amazon AWS. We need to change this to be our role on which we created in the previous video. This is the role for the trust anchor, the I am role. So it needs to say um, AWS over here. And then you need to get your role on over here. So I have mine saved in my projects. I'm just going to get it from there. With typos. There. And paste it there. Now we need to paste this in every occurrence in the script. So if we scroll down, we see it's another one over here. And another one here and one final one over here. Now there's going to be four in total every time. There's always going to be four. You see the errors went away and we can click save changes. Once that's done, we can go back to recognition and we can click create data set. And we can see at the top, our uh, recognition custom labels is creating your data sets. It might take a few minutes to finish. Oh, it's done. All right, so our data set is created. We now need to review our labels so you can sort by your different labels that is detected. And basically here you can confirm if the label attached is correct. If not, you can go and fix it. Um, you can manage them yourself here. Everything is normally pretty good. Um, and I will just say train model. So as you can see, this can take a little while. So it typically, typically takes from half an hour to a day to complete. And this depends on your data set size normally. There we go. It's started creating the model and it will begin training it. You can see training in progress. So I knew this takes a little while, so I went ahead and prepared another one. Um, so I'll go back to my projects and we have hello AWS open that up and now you can see this one is stopped it's not um, running but it is trained so we need to go into the model specifically and then to use the model we need to make sure it's started so we go to the use model tab and then under start or stop model we click start now as you can see when the model is running it can actually incur costs so you should make sure this is only running when the, when the model is actually being used you shouldn't just leave it running forever click start and then once it's running we can actually go and test this out now that our model is running we can open up studio pro and carry on with this build over there so last time around, I did the authentication connector. Now the recognition connector needs the authentication connector to work. Um, so I won't be covering it again. As I said, go back and watch that video if you haven't. Instead, we're gonna open up recognition over here. And on this page, I have a simple upload file or upload image uh, widget, and it's connected to a microflow button. Down below, we just have a grid for some previous searches. Um, so that's all just extra stuff. So I'm going to open up this button and you can see here I have some stuff going on and we have an empty space here. So we need to drag in our action from the recognition connector over here. So we can download the recognition connector from the marketplace. I can just search in Studio Pro over here for recognition and we can click download. Now I already have this downloaded in my project, so I'm not going to do it now. But you can see a nice um, list of all the actions it has here. And if you want to read the documentation, you can go ahead and do so. And it, this will link you to the Mendix docs to talk about the recognition connector. So mine's already downloaded, so we can just call it in our microflow. 
Um, we can go to the toolbox and search for custom labels. Now we can just drag this and put it in over here. Now you see this is going to return a list of detect custom labels and I'm going to handle that in this loop over here. So I'm going to open this up and you can see we need to provide it some details. First off is the project ARN and this is the recognition project ARN. So I have it there, but I'll show you where to get it in recognition and go to use model. And here is our project ARN. Now this needs to be in quotes because it is a string value. Next up image, and this is the image that we're passing in from the user. So this is um, recognition image. It will pre-fill if you have one available. Max results, we're gonna just set this to 10. We're gonna set minimum confidence to zero. So it will give us all the labels regardless of how confident it is. And then for your AWS region, I'm going to pass in a variable I created. And this is um, an enumeration that exists inside of the connector. So I just created a uh, variable using that enumeration. And this is how I set my region. So that brings back uh, a list. We need to give it a proper name. And we need to set our loop to run over that. Then inside of my loop, I create my own variables and this is what's displayed on the page. You can see I changed my image to processed and then I just re-show the uh, image in a pop-up with the labels. Now, this module is basically set up already. Um, it's going to take care of the credentials for you. So if you go in here, you can see it calls get credentials inside of its uh, microflow. And here we have the session credentials and the static credentials. Now we have to configure some constants for this to work. And these are for the authentication. Um, so if you open up your project, uh, your app explorer you can see underneath uh, Amazon recognition, we have connection details, constants, and then session credentials. Now this is what I'm using. So I have completed all of these. These are all the values from our uh, previous video that we sent up the authentication for. Now you also have the choice of using static credentials. And in that case, you need to make sure that this Boolean constant is uh, set to true. So your static credentials must be true and you need to fill in the values for the static credentials over there. I've already set mine up though. Now I did have to make one small change to get this to work in the uh, detect custom labels microflow. I had to add the header um, for the session token. So I retrieved the session token from the credentials and I attached it to my REST request over here um, with the header XAMD security token. And then I passed in the value of, this, of the session token to get this to work. Okay, everything is done so I can hit run and then we can test this out. Okay, once my app is running, I can click view app and you'll see our last login screen. So there's the authentication connector we built last time. So here I'm going to click recognition connector and we can browse for an image of a dog. I have one on my desktop of my own dog. And then we can click call recognition. So our breakpoint is triggering. You can see it's going to step over the use static credentials. And if we let it continue and go back to our page, we show the pop-up and we can see that the top result is pug 96%. I know the idea for my app is a bit silly, but what I wanted to show you is that you can create your own recognition model using a really small data set. If I can train it to identify a pug in a photo, then imagine how easy it is to create your own inspection app or image processing application to do whatever you want. If you get stuck at any point, make sure to head over to AWS's workshops where you can take the workshop low code application development in AWS with Mendix. It covers everything I did in this video, but in much greater detail. 
Also, make sure to head over to our doc pages for another great breakdown of the connector and how to use it. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mocky, and this is Hello AWS.